Hello everyone, welcome back to PTech Chemistry channel. This is the last lecture tutorial for this organic chemistry for the combined science GCSE, IGCSE or all level chemistry contents. So in continuation of this idea of alkenes, we can see that alkenes undergo a third type of reactions. Previously, I've talked about alkenes undergoing combustion and they will give you CO2 or H2O. In addition to, you know, cracking long chain hydrocarbons, you can write equation for alkene combusting with oxygen. For example, C2H4 plus O2, C3H6 plus O2, you can get CO2 and H2O balance your equation. You can do addition with bromine because that is essentially just forming one product as you add across the carbon-carbon double bond you will decolorize the aqueous bromine which was orange yellow to begin with as this is aqueous bromine and not liquid bromine this is a slightly uh, lighter color of the actual liquid bromine so orange sol yellow solution of aqueous bromine decolorizes decolorizes mean it turns colorless as you add the br br onto carbon carbon double bond because that is the chemistry of unsaturated hydrocarbons with carbon carbon double bond across this compound containing carbon and hydrogen only that's why it's called hydrocarbon and as you do that, then you will only get one product despite two things uh, reacting because these two have added together, you add across the carbon-carbon double bond. The last bit of reaction is actually this thing called addition polymerization. So you have the addition reaction, but you have a new word called polymerization. And that in essence is what we're going to be talking about in this specific lecture tutorial. So what is this addition polymerization? So we're going to form this thing called polymer. So polymer is a large molecule. So large means big. So long chain. Why is it long chain? Because it's made out of many small chain. These many smaller molecules called monomers. And it's called addition polymerization because you get this long chain big molecule by adding across the carbon-carbon double bond. So that's why you need this thing called unsaturated hydrocarbon. Unsaturated there means containing carbon-carbon double bond and you have hydrocarbon. So what does hydrocarbon mean to you? Contain only hydrogen and also carbon atoms only. So no other elements only contain hydrogen and carbon atoms with carbon-carbon double bonds in alkenes. It has CnH2n general formula. So what do we do? We draw the monomer, which are just the individual alkenes. So if we have the individual alkenes, so I'll show you an example. For instance, we have carbon-carbon double bond, H, 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 and H. Let me use a different color. And we have another different carbon double bond here which is a different monomer. Well, it is the same monomer. Actually, what I mean is that it's a second monomer like this. And what happened is that this carbon-carbon double bond can add onto this carbon-carbon double bond. And now what we have is we will have the blue one, carbon-carbon. We will have the red one, carbon-carbon. But we have formed a new bond between the blue and the red one because they have added together. And I will have lost my double bond. So remove the double bond. And now draw single bond that is what it means remove the double bond so no more carbon carbon double bond but now just carbon carbon single bond you already reacted the double bond now they form single bond this is the new bond let's have a look at the blue color one the original carbon two of these one and two h h h h so the first one on the left h h the second one h and h now we look at the red color one we're going to put in what you have originally this first carbon also have H and H. This second carbon also have H and H. And then we run into some problems because carbon form four covalent bonds. This is ethene and this is display formula. If you draw the dot and cross, you will draw it with dot and cross, of course, because there's year nine dot and cross covalent bonding. So what we could see here is that this is one, two, three, and four covalent bond on this carbon. One, two, three, and four covalent bond on this carbon. It's the same thing on this other monomer, which is also ethene. So you have ethene and also ethene here. So it's the same monomer. But now we have one, two, three. This carbon is okay. One, two, three, four. This carbon is also okay. One, two, three, four. But this one is one, two, three. So we have a problem that our problem is that we need to have carbon forming four covalent bonds because this is continuous. It's continuous. 
is now part of the polymeric chain. That is why this is called polymerization because you are doing something to have a long chain molecule connected by the small chain, the small monomer, adding up together and you will check carbon from four covalent bond. I have shown two repeat units. What do I mean by repeat unit? Because it will repeat itself. So this is one repeat unit. So by identifying the repeating unit, we can see that you know the monomer come from the repeating unit going backward. Just remove the two double the two single bond on the end there, and then add in a double bond. We are going the opposite way, and we will get back our monomer. That is how you can identify the monomer from the polymer. That is how you can draw the polymer from the monomer one way and the other. So in the name for the addition polymer, just add poly. Poly means many. So polygamy, many wife. Polygon, many site. Polymer, many of the monomer join up together. And then bracket the name of the monomer. If the monomer is ethene, so what you get will be poly bracket ethene. So what you get is polyethene as the name of the monomer. So polyethene is widely used as a plastic bag. So that's why it's very, very important industry, packaging and also bottles. The reason is because, well, they're quite tough and they're durable. If you use uh, plastic bags before, when you go to the market, when you go outside and buy food, they give you plastic bags. So those plastic bags are made of polyethene. It's made of these long chains of ethene having added together to give you this long chain molecule called polyethene. It's an addition polymer, it is tough, it's durable, it's used to make plastic bags and packaging. So describe the formation of polyethene. You have got monomers, the monomers undergo addition, many additions to give you this long chain molecule called polymer. Identify the repeat unit, what get repeated. We could see that that is the repeat unit. And if you see this is one repeat unit, this is another repeat unit. When we go backwards, we remove the two single bond on the opposite end there and we add in a double bond and we get back it in as our monomer. So identifying the repeat unit, getting back the monomer. Alternatively, you can start from the monomer and get the polymer. State that polyethene is a widely used plastic. As mentioned, it is tough, it's durable, it's a widely used plastic to make plastic bags there. This is basically what I mentioned there. The ethene is basically that, that repeat unit of the monomer. And when you draw the polymer, no more double bond. So no more unsaturation. No more unsaturation because no more carbon-carbon double bond. Why? Because you have, you have already added onto the carbon-carbon double bond. So previously, you have unsaturated hydrocarbons. Now, no more. What is important there is that is your open chain carbon from four covalent bond. So when you draw part of polymer, you cannot have carbon forming three covalent bond. The biggest danger of plastics, which was not mentioned, this is part of year 10, environmental chemistry. A little bit of geography lessons is that we know that plastic bags are very bad for the environment. That's why people have moved on to use recycled bag, which you can wash, which you can use repeatedly. And that's because plastics are not biodegradable. Biodegradable means they don't break down easily or they don't get broken down by bacteria. So they don't get broken down by bacteria. They don't break down easily. So naturally, if you leave your food compost outside, your food will decompose, your food will rot, your food will go bad because action of bacteria will make it rot and decompose. Plastics, you can leave it there forever and it will not rot, it will not decompose, it will not go away. So it's non-biodegradable, they don't break down easily by bacteria. Okay, so what are the environmental challenges or the problems? Burning plastics will release toxic gases. These are bad. Usually people get rid of plastic by burning them. If you have gone to you know, any landfill site, they try to get rid of it. They just throw petrol at it and they burn it. And they can release toxic gases which are harmful for us. The next one is occupy landfill site. So landfill site are basically the garbage disposal site. So the garbage disposal site, if you leave it there forever, it will be there forever. So, you know, 
it produces some issues. It causes some issues in terms of the garbage disposal. It will occupy the lane. In countries like Singapore, where the land is very scarce, the land is very limited, this becomes a big, big issue, especially where the land is very scarce and limited. Plastics can also accumulate in oceans, and that means that you know they don't get digested, they don't get broken down, which means when plants, sorry, not when plants, when fishes, when big fish eat them, it will stay in the big fish. When small fish eat them, it will stay in the small fish. So it gets passed down the food chain and they accumulate in oceans. This will kill aquatic animals. Eventually, these aquatic animals, these animals from sea, from lakes, from rivers, come back to us as human, consume these animals, and it will be quite bad for us to consume the very same plastic that we throw away. So three challenges there. Burning plastic give off toxic gases. Plastics do not decompose, so they occupy landfill site for a very long time. Plastic can also accumulate in oceans because they don't get broken down. So they accumulate along the food chain. It's part of a biology lesson. And therefore, uh, this danger eventually come back to us as we consume these aquatic animals, which would have died consuming these plastics to begin with. I just want to run up this thing just to talk about a different monomer. For example, if you have this thing called propene, this is C3H6. So this is N equal to 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. So CNH2N there. So this is your alkene propene. It has got your carbon-carbon double bond. So what I'm going to do is what is the polymer? To work out the polymer, well, we know the name is going to have a poly and then just add in the propene there. So that is the polymer. We're going to do by looking at these carbons that contain the carbon-carbon double bond. They become single covalent bond. Double bond becomes single covalent bond. I look at the first carbon here. It has got hydrogen and hydrogen. So I put in the hydrogen and hydrogen. This second carbon has got a hydrogen there. It has got a bond there to a CH3. So I put in the CH3. But now I lost my double bond. I have a single covalent bond. This carbon now has one, two, three covalent bond. This carbon now has one, two, three covalent bond. This carbon is happy. One, two, three to the three hydrogen and four covalent bond. I'm not bothered about this thing, which is already happy. I'm bothered about these two, which are not happy. So we know that it's part of polymer. So what we do is we open it up. So this is what I meant by open chain of the polymer. So you got to show that it's continuous polymer is continuous on both ends there. So you will have n number of it. So number of your monomer. If you have n number of monomer forming it, so you will have n times of the repeat unit. Because they repeat themselves, depending on if you have three of them that add together, they're going to have three of these repeat unit. So this is one repeat unit. If a question asks you to draw two repeat unit, then you would draw one repeat unit first, and then you would draw the other one, such that you have one repeat unit, as you could see here. Then what I do is I draw another repeat unit, and then what I do is I just combine them together. So this is two repeat unit, because from there to there, that is one repeat unit. If they ask you to draw one repeat unit, that is fine. But if they ask you to draw two repeat units, that means you have to draw two of them. So this is the second repeat unit. This is another repeat unit. But identifying the repeat unit, we should be able to easily identify this thing here. We remove the two single bonds on opposite end, and we add in a double bond there, and we will get back this propene, which is C3 has six. So the name is polypropene because the monomer is propene there. This is addition polymerization. You have done addition onto the carbon-carbon double bond. You have formed a polymer because the monomer adds onto the same monomer to give you a long chain large molecules consisting of repeating units of the monomers, but no more double bond there. I think that's all really for this idea of uh, polymers coming from, addition polymers coming from alkene monomers. Having done addition polymerization, you get useful properties like toughness, durability, therefore you use polyethylene in plastic bags. Polypropylene is also used to make plastic bags as well, just different types. The danger caused by plastics that don't decompose, non-biodegradable, therefore uh, we burn them, but this can release toxic gas. 
they are non-biodegradable, they don't decompose, so they, they fill up landfill site for a long time. This can cause land pollution, of course, and they accumulate in oceans and kills animals who can't digest them, and it just gets stuck in the stomach without getting digested. Therefore, all the aquatic animals will die, eventually get down the food chain, and it can kill us if we consume plastic as well. That's all really for this organic chemistry combined science curriculum, 14 to 16 years old, GCSE, IGCSE, and all level combined science chemistry. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to my channel. Do follow me at ptet.chemistry. That's at ptet.chemistry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Telegram to get connected. I believe this is the very last lecture tutorials covering all the topics in the combined science curriculum, combined science chemistry curriculum. Uh, so thank you for watching. Thank you for taking this journey with me. And I wish you all the very best in your future undertaking with the combined science curriculum. There's the other two branches as well, biology and physics. I'm a chemist, so I'm just going to focus on the chemistry aspect of it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial video.